or shoot them an email at info at rwpromotion.com.au. Also want to give a shout out to the guys at Blacklight Art and Design, who in my opinion are the Gold Coast best screen printers. So, uh, you know, we've gotten many band shirts and even our own Rabid Noise shirts done through these guys. And uh, they've also got one of the fastest turnarounds I've ever seen. So all quality prints at competitive prices. Uh, so whether it's band merchandise, sporting teams, promotional garments or workwear, you know, they've got you covered. So hit them up at www.blacklight.com lightad.com.au or email them at info at blacklightad.com.au so big thanks to those guys for helping us to bring you this podcast each and every week and for of course supporting the metal scene so now it's back to rabid noise and we're back with vincent from anathema now you released a remastered version of a fine data exit this year how did that come about man tell us about that it came about for wanting wanting to do a different track list um Wanting to change the running order, uh, wanting to do um, a, a bit of work on the mastering and a bit of um, well, we wanted to in- include the original intro, which we we dropped at the time because I think because probably because we felt it was a bit too metal, and we were kind of consciously trying to steer ourselves away from that. Uh, but we've so yeah, it's it's gone back to probably how it originally should have gone. I don't know. There's there's two schools of thought on that really. I I kind of like the original running order as well, so I I don't mind both ways really. But um, that was the biggest motivating factor for it. Do you still dig a bit of metal yourself? The heavier stuff? No, I don't. I um I kind of stopped listening to that during the early '90s. Really, I uh, once I kind of grew up a bit, you know. I think it was like it was more an adolescent thing with me, metal. Mm. I, like the only thing. A couple of bands that I'll I'll might go back and listen to now and again, but not really. Like I I, I like Voivod, you know, because they were interesting. Mm. They were they were another of those progressive sort of bands who kind of evolved somewhere else. And up until like when like the Outer Limits, when did that come out? Outer Limits was probably about ninety three. And um, yeah, that's a great record. Um, but uh, you know, I think uh, from when I was a kid. The big metal bands were all still good, you know, like um, Metallica, Slayer, uh, Anthrax, Testament, um, all those bands, like the big kind of sort of thrash bands, if you like, Iron Maiden probably as well. They were all good. And then the 90s hit and they all went shit at the same time, (laughs) all of them. Iron Maiden, fuck off with Fear of the Dark, you know, just piss off with that um, after doing Seven Sun. Metallica, the Black Album, shove it up your ass. Testament, Jump the Shark, all those bands, Anthrax went crap. Every fucking one of them, apart from Voivod, they actually got better. Uh, so at that point, like I was 17, um, and I just got into Aphex Twin, and uh, that was more intense than anything that anything I was listening to, to metal. And um, and ne- Nirvana's Nevermind, you know, that was fucking way more t- territorial pissings. It was fucking heavier than anything coming out that, that year. So it was like, all right, well, this will do me then. I still t- st- stayed in touch with a bit of it. I quite liked the black metal scene for a little while because uh, that felt felt like there was, um, you know, there was something going on there that was mm. that was interesting and different. But uh, for the most part, no. So you were mentioning before about uh, you're working on some new uh, material. So you're working on a follow up to Satellites now. Yeah, it's um, it's ongoing. It never really ends. You know, that composing music is something we do on a daily basis, you know, uh, kind of what we do with our days, you know, and, um, it's fun. Uh, you've got to remember that like anything, music is supposed to be fun, right. And, and it is, it's a lot of fun for me, like not fun in that sense. Oh, I'm having a great time, but it's like, it's, it's the thing I'd rather be doing with my day than anything else. You know, I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather get into my studio and start working on some ideas Ed, Quite often, than not, you know what my problem is finishing stuff off because I've got loads. I, I get um, I, I'll start something. I go, yeah, that's really cool. Okay, I'll come back to that. And then instead of coming back to it, I'll just start something else. You know, <laughs> and I've just got like these, like my hard drive is full of all of these good ideas that I've even forgotten about. Like I'll say, what the fuck's that one? And I, I open it up. And, oh yeah, I don't even remember. Hardly even remember doing that, but it's pretty good. All right. I have to come back to that one. 
<laughs> you must have, man, you must have just hours and hours and hours of just ideas. That would just... Well, I'm just looking at me I'm in music folder now. I've got 76 things that I'm working on at the moment. All, all for uh, Anathema or different... different well, I don't know. What it, 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 we'll see what it ends up being, you know, but... Um, Danny's the same. He's he's got he's probably got a hundred or more. John's got loads of stuff. You know, it's like we've got like I said, if if you're doing stuff all the time, then you just built up this huge backlog of uh, of ideas, and you just pick the best ones out and work on them for an album. You know, we're still at that stage where we haven't really got together and decided what tracks we want to work on for the next record, but we've got a fair idea. You know, if you were to ask me now, I could probably pick out six or seven that I know are going to make it to the next record. And that's awesome. It's exciting times. And, you know, we're definitely looking forward to having you guys back down here. So, man, it's uh, you're playing uh, the Trifford in Brisbane on October 29th. And the Trifford is awesome, man. It's such a great venue. You guys is are it? Gonna, oh, it's, I, I played there earlier this year and uh, loved it. Absolutely loved yeah. that venue, man. What, what kind of place is it? It's got Actually, a... no, don't, don't tell me. Don't tell me. All right. I'll check it out. I, I, I always like, I, you know, I'm going to spoil the surprise for myself. I always like to um, not have a, an idea of anything before I get there. Just to, just take it all in on the day, you know, experience it properly instead of knowing anything in advance. Okay. All right. I won't spoil it, but it's 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 a good place, man. I was I was more, I was very impressed. So, okay. Different. It's a different type of yeah. Without spoiling anything. <laughs> <laughs> so will you be there on the in in October? Oh, of course, man. I'm not going to miss well, that. Well, come shit. come over and say hi and that, like. Yeah, yeah, I will, man. No, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to seeing you guys again. It's going to be awesome, man. Especially you know, hearing what you guys are going to be doing acoustically, opposed to the big you know band thing. Yeah, the big full on job. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it's um it's definitely different, and it, it's um. I don't know, man. There's something about it, something about the acoustic gigs. They're, they're kind of different every night. There's like, there's more of an immediate sort of um, rapport with the audience as well because you can, I don't know, there's like, there's like an um, an invisible kind of, uh, I don't know, there's 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 a bit, a bit of a distance created with the full band, you know, like not just us, like any any fucking rock band, you know, mm. um, just the sheer volume and and the whole bombast of the whole thing you know it can create a little bit of a little bit of a wall you know that you've got to kind of climb over sometimes you know to just get that connection but with, with an acoustic gig it's it's already there you know you're not hiding behind anything it's like um it's it's just different every night that's what i like about it it depends so it, there's different variables it's the crowd it's the room it's um you know a little twist that you might put on a song that you didn't do the night before and um, yeah, I like it. Is more pressure? Do you, th- do, you th- do you think it's more? Yeah, pressure? It, there is. Yeah, definitely because um, it, it's 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 harder. It, um, it's more difficult to do than than the full band. Uh, the full band is is a piece of piss, to be honest. It's it's like it's second nature. But um, but with an acoustic gig, it's you know because you haven't got you're not hiding behind anything. Like I said, it's like. Up close and personal, you know, you've got to be able to pull that off, you know. Challenging, man. It would be, you know, especially when it's maybe a little, I don't know, it, it, would you say it's a little bit more stripped back or it's out to, for what you're saying, it's a lot more full on than what it actually is. It's not just you. Yeah, well, it's just, like, it's it's more full on than, than you would expect from an acoustic concert. If you say, okay, Anathema are coming over and playing uh, an acoustic set, people immediately think, okay, like a kind of MTV unplugged kind of thing where... Yeah. Uh, you got a, you, you sat down on a couple of stools with a couple of acoustic guitars and, you know, you're having a kind of an intimate performance. It's not really like that. We, we get into it, you know, we're, we're all, there's a lot of energy going on from the stage and in, in the music itself. So it's, it's just different, really. It's not really, it's somewhere in between, you know. It's pretty exciting, man. I can't wait, dude. It's going to be really, really cool. We're going to go to the track Summer Night Horizon now. Thanks for hanging with us tonight, Vincent, and we'll see you at the Trifford in Brisbane on October 29th. Cheers, man. It's interesting that the three tracks you played, we never do those live. So <laughs> good, good job you played them on the radio. Yeah, <laughs> they're the ones I like. Uh, yeah, there you right. go.
<laughs> All right, man. Cheers, yeah.